yes, yeah, there's um, a lot of things that um, they're unaware of. And um, certainly what we've seen in the current market, especially in the Johannesburg side, is that there's not a lot of properties available. People want to jump into the property market. There's not a lot of properties available and um, it makes it difficult. Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on the Private Property Facebook page. It's 7 p.m. and it's a weekday, so you know what it what time it is. It's time for us to sit down and talk everything property. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you are joining us for the first time, this is the podcast where we talk each and every single thing of property. So whatever questions that you may have about property, how to grow your portfolio, how to even start in the market, this is the podcast for you. So make sure that you share this link if you are regular with anybody you think might benefit from the conversation that we are having right here and if anyone is joining us on the twitter spaces thank you so much for coming through tonight we are talking something that is quite popular because i mean it's 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 something that we all go through and we are talking overcoming the obstacles of buying a home this may be your first home this may be your second home this might even be your third or fourth home you know but there are those different obstacles that rear their heads at different points in time you know in these transactions because each transaction is unique and has those different circumstances that make it difficult at some point, you know, when you are buying a home. So tonight I'm joined by a seasoned professional, as usual, someone who's going to bring us tips, tricks, and insights on how you can really overcome these obstacles and make sure that you bag that home. Um, we, I'm talking to Nadia Ogam today, who is a broker manager and legal liaison at Remax All Stars. Nadia, good evening and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Really, really appreciate um, you making the time. Um, I'm just going to really jump into the conversation tonight and talk about, in your experience, what is the most difficult thing for consumers when buying a home? Yeah, so what we've seen is actually a lot of people um, wanting to buy homes. Um, they haven't got a deposit and they're unaware of all the fees that's actually involved when um, they need to buy a property, like the transferring fees, and um, everything that ties in with that. So it's quite a shock when they see, okay, it's not only the bond amount that they've got, they um, need to look at all the extra fees, the transferring fees, bond registration fees, and then everything that goes with it. Sure. So would you say that, um, because that just speaks to finances, do you, would you say that that is just one of the biggest ones? What, the, what are the other ones um, that you have seen? Um, I really want us to tackle them today. So, you know, we can spend some time to really talk about them in terms of what they are and what they look like. And um, one of the other things that I want us to do before I forget is to talk about the ones that catch them unaware. So maybe um, the financial ones or the financial implications may be a bit... Um, uh, popular but what is that one thing that someone is like i never knew <laughs> that this needs to happen when i'm buying a home yes yeah there's um a lot of things that um they're unaware of and um certainly what we've seen in the current market especially in the johannesburg side is that there's not a lot of properties available people want to jump into the property market there's not a lot of properties available and um it makes it difficult because um, you haven't got a lot of options. And if we list a property that's well priced, it will sell within the first 21 days that it's listed. So um, I think also um, shortage of um, stock in the property industry is also quite a concern. And then any additional um, costs that can be like the removal company, the cleaning costs, all those things also add up when you purchase a house and um, people don't budget for that. Yeah, so also again financial, but um, yeah, there's quite a few things actually. 
Sure. And in your opinion, what would be the best way for somebody who wants to go into the property market? Um, now I'm talking first time buyer, somebody who's never been through a transaction before. We will touch a bit on the people who are increasing their property portfolio just later on in the conversation. But I want this to help those people who are considering going into the property market as a first time homeowner. What are those things that they, they, they should prepare for, you know, um, uh, to decrease that anxiety and to decrease that, you know, the, the emotions that come with um, buying a new property? Uh, yes, I think also um, what I would suggest is when you consider buying a property, first do maybe a credit check on yourself just to check that um, there's no listings on your name that you're unaware of. And that can be quite a shock to people as well. Um, we also try and assist people then just to sort out if they've got anything on their name um, with the credit bureau, just to sort that out and we wait the time out for them to buy a property. But um, what I would suggest just to ease the whole process is to deal with a professional property practitioner, somebody that's reputable, that you know, and um, also that comes with a big um, brand. I think that's also good. You don't want to fly by night that you want to you put in an offer and you don't hear from them ever again. So I think a reputable company is definitely a must when you're considering buying a property. Sure. And when we are looking at, um, the, I've, I've just started this process and how does a typical process look and where are most stumbling blocks are? Let's say a property has already been approved and my affordability is great and my credit score is amazing. Um, what are the some of the things that I, I need to look out for, you know, in the journey of acquiring a property that may be a bit of a stumbling block and um, especially when it comes to other parties like, you know, the deeds offices and um, you mentioned a little bit about um, the, the, the other costs like cleaning and all of those things. Um, I want to talk more in, in the ways of um, you making sure that you are on the right side of the law <laughs> and making sure that things are done properly and accurately. Yes, yes. Um, that is actually such a good question to ask. Once you've obtained your finance um, from the banks, you set to go, um, offer accepted, finance approved, you're on your way um, to get the property registered in your name. So um, I would suggest just making sure that um, everything is legal and that um, especially nowadays with the defects list on the um, property, go through the defects list, check that you are aware of everything that's listed. If you are unsure, maybe meet with your agent and go to the property, meet with the seller, let them show you what they've actually specified on the defects list because at a later stage when it's registered, you don't want to go back and say, you know, I didn't know, I was unaware of this. Um, I, don't, I want to cancel this deal based on something that was um, unclear in the um, defects list as disclosed by the seller. So that can be a major thing. And um, another thing is also, once you're in this process, you are part of the legal and binding document. So we want to see this transaction through as smoothly as possible and um, make sure that everybody's happy at the end of the day. You got so excited when you signed the offer, when you found um, that your bond has been approved. So we want to make sure that that whole process keep you in the loop every step of the way that you know what's happening and that all the compliance certificates are provided by the seller so that we know everything is um, legally in order before it gets registered. Perfect. And um, with with new developments, you know, a lot of times when new developments are coming up, you see no transfer costs and um, easy and, and simple to register. Let's talk a little bit more about new developments. Is the process of getting a new development um, fundamentally different? And how is it different? Like, and we're still talking around uh, somebody who is who is a new time uh, or first time buyer. rather. Let's talk a little bit how um, they are different from, from buying a first time. Uh, 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 a new development and a property that has already been in existence and someone has been occupying it. Let's talk the, the different processes that, um, that exist there. Yes, with new developments, it's actually um, quite different from buying a brand new home. When you buy um, a development, you actually, sometimes we actually sell it from plan. So um, the buyers will have an indication. There's, um, the plans will be laid out and some sketches will give an indication of what 
the finishes will be at the end of the day. And they actually buy a property without seeing it sometimes. Um, through the process, as we go about, you will be able to then pick the finishes, um, choose different tiles, and you've got a budget for specific things with new developments that you can actually get involved with that. If um, you buy a house that's already, I want to say, it's built a couple of years ago, you're not buying a brand new place. So there it's completely different. The owner is selling the house with stewards, although they need to declare um, any defects to the property. With the new development, you've actually got a snag list afterwards. Once you move in, you can go through everything, make sure everything is working perfectly. If there's any snags, it can be addressed by the developer and it will be sorted out. So you've got the benefit, I always say, the benefit of buying a new property from off plan or a new development, it's perfect, especially for first time buyers. Um, there's not um, no transferring um, cost involved and only the bond registration costs if, if you apply for a bond, if it's not a cash sale. Um, but it, that's actually the assistance that comes in there helps a lot, especially if you're a first time home buyer, where if you buy a property there um, where people already lived in, there you will have your transfer fees that you need to pay, um, transfer duties, um, as well as your bond registration fees. Sure. Um, thank you so much for that. You know, it's really, really insightful and informative. So um, these processes are different. Let's let's now move a little bit, you know, um, escalate this conversation a little bit and talk commercial properties. You know, with commercial properties, a lot of people who start the um, going into um, these commercial property sales and um, purchasing are people who want to grow their property investment. Uh, let's let's talk a bit more on how how different um, and the obstacles that one might face if you are buying a commercial property or even buying land. How does how how do these processes differ? Um, I think also with land or commercial properties, we need to look at the zoning of the property. That's very important to look at the zoning. Um, it might not be zoned for the needs that you've actually um, identified that you want the property for. So zoning is extremely important when um, purchasing commercial or actually land for commercial use. Make sure about um, that you go about getting zoning certificates from the um, property practitioner that you are dealing with. And also full disclosure, um, if there's any servitudes or... Um, rights that's registered over that specific property um, because sometimes especially with distilleries or um, where you need additional licenses you will have to look at each um, zoning certificate to make sure that you will be able to actually use it for um, like distillery or for mm. um, industrial and commercial properties. Sure. And you know, when, when businesses look for properties like this, um, as you said, it's for a specific use. And um, apart from um, them looking in terms of location, are there specific costs that are involved that are specific for um, commercial properties that don't exist when one is buying um, property for, for residential uh, purposes and for, for one to live in? Are, is it different? Do, do we have specific costs that are specifically for um, commercial properties? Um, there are um, additional costs um, from time to time, but mostly it runs the same process. We've still got your transfer fees that you need to pay um, if there's a bond or bond registration fees. Although with some commercial properties, you will find that some of the banks won't give you a full bond, depending on the price of the property or um, the, the usage of the property. You might need to put down a substantial deposit to actually um, assist with the bond given. Oh, thank you so much. Great, um, great stuff. Um, if you just joined us, we are talking overcoming the obstacles of buying a new home. And just a little bit here, we've been talking also about um, investment property and commercial property and even buying land. So if you just joined us, that is the conversation we are having tonight. And I'm joined by Nadia Ogump, who is a broker manager as well as legal advisor at Remax All Stars. So if you have a question or a comment or even a story of how you overcame um, you uh, getting a property or the obstacles that you faced send those send those questions to us on facebook um, nadia is still here for us to take those questions to tackle those issues and let us get that information out there it's very very important that as we're here we engage on the right topic so send um, those questions and we will take them before we close the conversation tonight 
And now you're talking about um, the great violence, you know, that people have these discussions at Bryce, they have these discussions at the water coolers when they're at the office. Let's talk about how um, how important it is for someone to get the right information about um, getting or, or acquiring a property. What What is your take on, on the, this advice? You know, a lot of people have different mediums now where um, information is just there. What, how would you advise someone who is trying to, to get a property or... or uh, increase their their portfolio and are, are having these conversations with other people what would you say to those ones um i would definitely um if well via the grapevine i yeah. will just test and see if the information is accurate because a lot of um information that goes around is hearsay and it's not very accurate at the moment um definitely i know before the um the declaration by seller was um, approved that we had to um, put that forward in every transaction. A lot of people were actually trying to force us to um, provide the declaration. Although it only came into play quite recently, we've made sure that all our transactions come through with that. So it's important to know that um, there is specific regulations that we need to abide to when you buy a property. And also, um, look at the person who's giving you the information. Have they gone through a similar process now? Have they recently bought a property? They might know some things that has happened to them, for instance, um, to guide you a little bit. But overall, I would um, work with a, um, a professional and a pre reputable property professional to actually make sure that all these things are ironed out and that you know you're in good hands when you actually do um, a property transaction. No, totally. Um, doing your research is very important. And even on, on sites like private property, we've got um, we've got a, an area, uh, an area blog where you can actually read up on the area. You can see the kind of amenities that are around in the area and actually really see how much value does a property in this area, whether commercial, whether land or whether a residential would cost and um, what exactly you're going to be paying for. So even the, that conversation that you are having with um, with the property agent or the seller is fruitful and is very directed and intentional because then you then know you are armed with that information, you know, to make the right decision. Um, let's talk parting words. Um, thank you so much for joining us and you can just give us parting words and advice or one of the other, uh, the highlights for you that you're saying, this is what I would say um, to overcoming obstacles when you are buying a home. Um, I would definitely encourage people. Um, property is such a great investment. Um, you will always get that nervous feeling when making a big transaction. I think it gets easier for property investors that's doing it on a daily basis. They're not emotionally connected to the property. But for first-time homeowners, um, you've got that emotional connection that you make with a property. Um, that nervousness will be there. But it's property is a great investment. Do your um, research, ha have all the facts at hand, and make a good um, research um, decision when um, you put down an offer to purchase. And I can tell you, in South Africa, property is a good investment. And I would encourage people, if you can afford to buy property, especially now with the lower interest rates, make that investment. Use a good um, and reputable um, property practitioner and you can't go wrong. Thank you so much, Nadia, for joining us tonight. Really, really appreciate you taking out the time and giving us such such insightful and, and nuggets that we can use to, to, to help us when we are buying our next property and our next home. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Cheers. And that is how we come to the end of the show tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, whether on the Twitter spaces, whether here on Facebook. And if and even if you catch up on the show later on, this conversation was really insightful and hope you have learned so much from it. My name is Dumi and have a great evening. Till the next time we see you right here on the Private Property Podcast, 7 p.m. every weekday. Have a good night. <laughs>